and uh, congratulations goes out to Cincinnati. Um, they they did a did a nice job and um, did a better job than what we did in that second half for sure. I uh, appreciate our fans for sticking with us throughout the season and uh, and then being being great today. So um, listen, I it's my responsibility to make sure that we we do better offensively and as a team and. Um, I obviously didn't get that done that second half. So um, I've, got to, I've got to do a better better job there. We'll go back and look at things and make the adjustments that, that we need to uh, go into the offseason. Unfortunately, this is so final, and uh, uh, that's that's where we sit now. And it's um, our players were disappointed. Uh, obviously, they put a lot of time and effort into this, putting themselves in this position. Uh, for a championship game. I'm proud of them for that and the way they battled through some of the problems that we had early in the season. So we, um, um, again, uh, am very appreciative of the guys. With that time, yours. Let's go first to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Andy. Can you take us through your thinking on that play, the last play of the first half? And Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Yeah, so I was, you know, I was hoping we could get get the ball in the end zone. I probably gave him the wrong play first of all. So uh, to start with, I could have given him something better than that, um, where the play was open in the end zone, and um, and then we wouldn't have to go through that. But it's, um, I'll, I'll take responsibility for that one out. Right. And um, it, it looked like after Joe Burrow's run in overtime, there you, I know you can't challenge, but you were, were you asking the officials to review that play? for a fumble is that what you were doing there yeah not, not joe burrow the you're talking about the yeah next yeah next so um yeah i was i was wondering what what they were gonna say about that yes um you can't challenge right there but it's uh i, I had a chance to um to talk to him and they said he gave himself up so let's go next to herbie gop go to herbie Coach, in that first half, obviously, you, you, the offense is humming. Uh, in the second half, sputtering. What exactly happened there in that second half? Did the Bengals present a different look defensively? Yeah, not, listen, Herbie, not really. I mean, they played a little bit uh, more man on second down. But other than that, uh, no, not really. So we, we just, uh, you know, if I, again, I can put the players in better positions to make plays. I, I didn't get that part done. Thanks to Sam McDowell. Good, Sam. Hey Andy, um, I wonder if you could share what, what you shared with the team at all after the game. Yeah, Sam, so uh, listen, I know it's disappointing and it, it's final. That's uh, the unfortunate part of it. So uh, when things are in a calmer state, we'll get together um, tomorrow for a team meeting. Uh, but I, I do appreciate the, the work in which they each guy put in. So, and, and respect them for that, especially where we, where we were early in the season. Connects to Pete Sweeney. Good, Pete. Coach, it, it seemed like Patrick might have been um, uh, pressing a little bit there in the, in the second half, especially heading into overtime. Any rhyme or reason in, in your mind as to maybe why that turned up a little bit again? Yeah, listen, I mean, uh, Patrick's a great player, so he was trying to make a play. And uh, like I said, I, I've got to do a better job of giving him things that he can make plays with, so I can do a lot better in that area. Next to Nate Taylor. Good, Nate. Andy, the end of the second half, you guys were within the five-yard line. Can you just uh, share with me what the thought process was, whether to uh, try to end the game with the ball with the, with the touchdown or just what the thought process was of, of maybe passing the ball uh, versus running the ball there? Um, yeah, well, I was trying to, we were trying to score, you know, a touchdown. So any way we could score a touchdown, we were trying to score a touchdown. I mean, hindsight would tell you, well, the passes weren't working, so maybe you should have run it. But... You know, we we're just trying to get the ball in the end zone so we could give them as little time as possible and score, you know, score a touchdown. Got three more going right down the line, starting with Todd Lebo. Good time. Hey, Coach, at the end of the first half, you mentioned the, the the play call there, but how close was it to you guys just kicking the field goal there? It looked like Pat was lobbying for it. Were you 50-50? Yeah, we had, had enough had time to – we had enough time for another play, but I've got to – Get one that, that's open in the end zone. So, yeah. let's go next to Todd Palmer. Go, Todd. 
Um, I, I was just curious about about the pass rush and Joe Burrow. You, you know, the Titans got nine sacks. Chris Jones had him had Burrow dead to rights, but were you, did you feel like you guys had more of an opportunity um, to get after him this game? And, and what role do you think that played in the final outcome? Yeah, so we we did have opportunities. Um, he got out of those, and um, you know, again that that happens. Um, but uh, they were holding extra people in too, as you saw, um, to, for protection purposes. We'll go last to Matt Derrick, but Matt. Hey coach, um, you know, there's been some statistics that kind of correlate that when Patrick is moving around a lot, that sometimes that's when he gets away from his best games. Uh, is there anything in the moment in the second half that, you know, where you, you can talk to Patrick or anything that you see where he gets mobile like that and, and to try and, and change things up a little bit? Uh, listen, Matt, I, I, like I said, I could have given him other things uh, to work with and better things. So um, I didn't. He was trying to move around like he does and make plays. And he did, you know, that you never have to worry about that part. So, um, but I could have given him better, better plays to work with. Not all the time do you have a chance to play for championships and, you know, play for Super Bowls, you know, to hang banners, you know, to, to, to make the city proud. And, you know, obviously we, you know, fell short today, but, um, you know, it's a lot of good to, to look back on. Um, you know, we won a lot of football games. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the last two losses, you know, that we've had in the playoffs, um, you know, it hasn't really been our standard, you know, and, um, but I'm proud, you know, of, 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 of the way we continue to fight, you know, throughout the season. Um, you know, I'm proud of the way we stuck together. I'm proud of our coaches, you know, and the way that they continue to, you know, take bullets for us. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's a lot of good, you know, to, to, to think about. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm grateful, you know, for the opportunity. But um, I think anytime you come up short um, and you know you could be better, you know, it's, it's obviously deflating, you know. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Tyron, um, I know you weren't involved with pass rush much, but um, I was wondering about Joe Burrow. I mean, you guys have played against him twice now. Um, he's been kind of a he's not a real mobile guy, but a little bit elusive. Is he more difficult to uh, to bring down than maybe you would think? Well, I think he's a smart quarterback, um, you know, and I think obviously, you know, um, he's not geared to run around. He's not geared to, you know, get 60, 70 rushing yards a game. Um, but I think, he, you know, he's a smart player. He's a smart quarterback. And I think, you know, within certain schemes or certain coverages, um, you know, there is a window, you know, for the quarterback to run the ball in. Um, you know, hats off to him. Obviously, this kid studies a lot of tape, and, you know, he has the instincts to go with it as well. And, you know, uh, he made a couple, you know, third down, you know, scrambles today that, you know, kind of lifted their team, you know. And I think for us, you know, anytime you can get off the field when it's third and six, third and seven, you know, third and long, um, you just got to you gotta dig deep and, and, and try your best to, to just get off the field. But... You know, uh, just felt like those guys made a little bit more plays, you know, than us today. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Good, Pete. All right. I, I apologize for how abrupt this question comes, but uh, we're not sure when we'll, we'll get you again. Just how eager are you to just remain with the Kansas City Chiefs? I, I know we haven't talked about that in a while, but just uh, continuing your time here in Kansas City. I mean, I, you know, I hope so. You know, um, you know, ever since I came here, you know, I've just tried to be the right kind of teammate. Um, you know, I've tried to play my part and, you know, uh, obviously, you know, it's always that feeling that, you know, you can make more plays for your team, but um, I'm hoping it works out. Um, you know, I don't have any control over that. Um, you know, I feel like everything that was in my control, you know, uh, I tried my best to, to handle it and, and, and to do it with a smile. So, um, I love this team. I love this locker room. You know, it's a lot of coaches that I have great relationships with. And so I'm hoping, yeah. The last two, we'll go Todd Lebo and Todd Palmer. Go ahead, Todd Lebo. Hey, Tyron. The standard you guys have set here has been incredible the last couple of years, making the Super Bowl and all that, and losing it 
overtime at home in the FC Championship. There's no shame in that. But how do you, how do you characterize this season? I mean, do you call it a failure if you didn't make it to the Super Bowl? Um, I, I think, you know, the, the immature, you know, person in me would probably say, you know, we failed. Um, I think the bigger person in me, you know, realized that, you know, these things aren't always possible, you know, and, you know, for us to start the season the way we did and, you know, for us to kind of claw our way back out of last place, you know, put ourselves in first place, you know, uh, you know, give this city, you know, home games where, you know, they can come out and be a factor. Uh, I'm, I'm more, I'm more so just proud of, you know, the, the guys that I work with, the coaches that I work with. And um, so for me, uh, that's kind of, you know, um, sort of gratefulness comes into play. You know, you just have to be grateful for certain experiences, you know, um, certain challenges, you know, um, things that you know, you know, can can bring out the best in you, you know, um, in the future to come. So, you know, we got a lot of motivation, you know, um, and, you know, I know it's a lot of guys in that locker room that, you know, they, they, they're going to take this offseason personal, you know, to really get better um, because we do feel like we're, we're still the best team, you know, uh, in the NFL, but, you know, the best team doesn't always win. You know, it's, it's the team that, you know, uh, plays well and makes the plays, you know, that day, you know. So um, I'm, I'm just extremely proud to, to come to work with these guys. The last to Todd Palmer. Good Tom. Uh, hey, Tyrone, I, I just was curious, how, how frustrating was the second half? Because in some ways it seemed like a mirror image of the, the game, week 17 game at Cincinnati where you guys race out to a big lead and then, uh, you know, late in the second or second quarter and, you know, kind of starts to slip away. Was that, were you guys getting frustrated and, and did that previous matchup seep into your mind at all? No, I think every game is different. You know, obviously it was, you know, some motions and, you know, certain moves of the game kind of, you know, made it feel like, you know, week 17, but I think every week is different. Um, you know, I thought we came out today. I thought we, you know, we played up to our standard. Um, obviously in the second half, um, you know, credit to those guys, you know, they made the, they made more plays than us. And, um, you know, uh, you can't always control, you know, what the other team is going to do. Um, but, you know, obviously there was a lot of plays out there today that, you know, we all feel like, you know, we, we could have been better or we left out there. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's mo more importantly, you just have to continue to, to dig deep. Um, you know, this is another great challenge, you know, for this team, for this organization to, you know, continue to push forward, you know, and to continue to represent the AFC, you know, to continue to represent this division, you know, and I, I know that they can do that. Tyron, we appreciate Hey, Patrick, can you take us through that last play of the first half? Uh, what, what happened there, what you were thinking? And Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Yeah, we had just we had just ran a play. Uh, it took four seconds to play before um, where I burned it. So I knew that the time um, was low, obviously. I knew we needed to get points. Uh, we called a play that we were trying to get someone over the middle quick. Um, and then I was probably I was supposed to throw the ball away. Uh, I, got greedy, I got a little greedy there and tried to get to Tyreek and get a touchdown. They had two people out there. Um, so uh, definitely, I mean, in the long run of things, uh, it looks bad. But uh, if we had another chance, I would have went for another play again. Okay. And uh, the, the Super Bowl has been the standard around here now, obviously. How are you going to look back on this season when, when you have time to reflect on it? I mean, you take away the good things, uh, just like any season. Um, it's definitely disappointing. I mean, here um, with this group of guys that we have, we expect to, to be in that game and, and to, to win that game. And anything less than that is is not success. Um, so we'll, we'll go back and we'll look at all the things we did well, the adversity we battled through, the better the team that we became towards the end of the season, um, and try to learn and try to learn from the mistakes that we made and try to be better next year. Thanks to Herbie Tiop, but Herbie, Patrick, you mentioned some of the mistakes you're trying to learn from. What do you think went behind some of the struggles in that second half, especially coming off that first half where the offense seemed to be clicking on all cylinders? There's a few, just a few misreads here and there. There was guys that were open, um, and I, I didn't hit at the right time, or I didn't, I didn't, I, I passed up on a sudden shorter that I went for something. I wanted to get something deeper down the field. Um, and when you're playing a good team, and you don't hit what's there, and you and you try to get, try to get a little bit more than what's what's necessary, uh, you you it kind of bites you in the bites you in the butt, I guess you would say. I mean, it, it's something that uh, 
uh, we were playing so well in the first half. In the second half, uh, we were just off a tick, and that's all it takes to lose a football game. Next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Patrick, all these guys look at you as the leader of this team. I was wondering if you could kind of share your, your message to, to this team and, and, and what you said uh, after, after uh, the game in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I just I said I'm proud of those guys. I mean, if you looked at the season that we had, to be in this game in general, um, it's, definitely, it's definitely a special group of guys that battle through adversity. Um, but <clears throat> the leaders on this team know that this isn't, this isn't our standard. We want to win the Super Bowl. Whenever you taste that, that winning the Super Bowl, nothing less than that is success. And so – uh, we have to go back. Uh, obviously, every locker room is different, um, but uh, we have the core group of guys that it, that it takes to win, so we have to go back, learn from this, and try to be better next year. Thanks to Sam McDowell. Good, Sam. Hey, Patrick. And Brad, I have a follow-up. Um, I know it's fresh right fresh right now, but but what are the fresh feelings? Like, what, what goes through your mind immediately? Yeah, you're definitely disappointed. I mean, when you're this close and you're in the, the final four games, uh, you want to win the Super Bowl. And we've had two years in a row where we've lost an AFC championship, or actually three, four years really. We 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 lost AFC Championship game, won the Super Bowl, lost AFC, I mean lost Super Bowl, then lost AFC Championship. And so, I mean, a few plays here and there, you could have four chances at the Super Bowl. So I mean, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's definitely disappointing. But you have to learn from it. I mean, you can't let this end what we have here. You have to make sure that you continue to battle, continue to get better, uh, and try to find ways to win Super Bowls at the end of the day. And then it seemed like the Bengals were really trying to, in the second half, prevent you from scrambling a lot with the way they were playing the defensive lineman. Can you just explain what you were seeing in regards to that? Yeah, they just had a spy on me for the for the most part, and I've usually done a great great job of getting around that guy. But they did, they had a good game plan. Um, they were at, do, doing this a lot of similar stuff in the first half. We were we were just executing at a higher level, um, and they stayed with it. Uh, they fought. I mean, that's that's a good football team, but it takes a lot of of uh, fight to stay in a game whenever you're down like that. Um, but I mean, I got to be better. I mean, when you're up 21 to three at one point in the game, you can't lose it. And I, I mean, I put that on myself. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. After I have two questions, uh, just what did you see on the interception? And given your success scrambling in the red zone in the first half, was there anything that you just saw differently from the Bengals uh, when you had those opportunities late in the fourth quarter? Yeah, on the, the overtime inter- interception, um, I knew the safety was going to make it a play, make it a run at it. Um, but I just gave my guy a chance, and I mean, it, it got t- tipped. A uh, good play by one safety, and it fell right into the other dude's hands. So, uh, I mean, I would have, I would have done it again. I mean, whenever you have a guy like Tyreek running and he has to step on someone, give him a chance to, to make a play. And uh, I'll say like eight times out of ten, he, he makes that catch. And so, didn't didn't work for us today. Um, but um, I mean, that's a play that I would go to again if I had a chance. And then um, the red zone. I mean, we were only down there once in the second half, so it wasn't like we were, we weren't having. Great success. I mean, we were. It was at the point at the end of the game where they were just blocking the end zone, trying to keep us to a field goal. Um, so um, you got to be in the red zone more to have more success in it. Let's go next to Todd Palmer. Good, Todd. Uh, Patrick, I, I know you know it's weird to celebrate milestones in a game like this, but I did want to ask about Travis Kelsey. He's now tied for third most. Uh, postseason touchdowns in NFL history, one of only three guys with 100 catches. Uh, obviously, he was great today. Can you just talk about, um, you know, how, how much of a safety blanket he was and how terrific he was today? Yeah, I mean, he's just a competitor, man. Um, obviously, he's super talented, um, and everybody knows that, the routes he runs, how, how big and athletic he is and everything like that. But he's just a guy you want to go to battle with. He's going to fight to the very end. I mean, he, that's the type of dude he is, and we have guys like that all over this team, and uh, – uh, as disappointed I am at how we performed in the second half and losing the game and everything like that, I'm proud of how the guys fought to the very end of that game, no matter how disappointing it looked there in the in the second half. And last to Jory Epstein. Go ahead, Jory. Patrick, you talked about how after you reach the Super Bowl, nothing else really feels the same and you know what you're missing. In light of the news that Tom Brady seems to be on his way of retiring, does it give you any different perspective of how difficult it is to get to that place? And what can you take from his career as you try and get back to that place? Yeah, I mean, his career is one of a kind. I mean, that's why he's the GOAT. I mean, to win that many Super Bowls, to be in that many games, um, it's hard. And I've understood that. I mean, after the years that I've had, I mean, I've been close a lot, but I've only been there twice and I've only won one. Um, And I understand that it takes a, a special player a special group of guys a special circumstances for that to happen and i'm still trying to do whatever i can to give myself a chance every year to, do, to, to try to get in that game and to win it um but i mean who knows if he retires i feel like he i mean we don't know for sure um but uh regardless if he does or he doesn't he's gonna be a great football player and he's always been a great football player in his career
game, McCall, obviously it, it seemed like a game of two halves. The offense was clicking in the first half, and then the second half there were some struggles. What do you think happened in that second half against the Bengals' defense? I don't know, man. I just feel like um, I think we just got to SQ better. Um, we got to put points on the board. We can't just be having three and outs or, you know, just, you know, putting our defense in bad situations. So, um, we just got to SQ on the offensive standpoint. I mean, we scored three points total in the second half. So, um, I think that's that's on us to, you know, just to be better in certain situations and in key situations, and, you know, getting the ball down the field and uh, getting first downs and, you know, trying to get some points on the board. So, um, kind of didn't, didn't do that in the second half. So, next to Todd Lebo, but Todd. Hey, McCole, it seemed like everything was going perfectly in the first half, right? It's 21 to 3. Did you guys feel like you had already won the game a little bit? Was there any letdown at all? Or, or did you did you feel like this, you know, I mean, obviously you felt like you were going to win the game, but it did it feel like you guys had already kind of made it when the, when the league was where it was? No, we didn't. We know they're a good football team, and we know we had to, you know, score some more. We know we had to put more points on the board. But obviously, you know, we couldn't do that in the second half. But um, we never had no letdown. We wanted to keep scoring, wanted to keep putting points on the board, and you know, try to you know put the game away. But it's something we we just couldn't do in the second half. Thanks to Harold. Go ahead, Harold. Well, Cole, what specifically was it from a defensive standpoint that you saw differently? Uh, that the Bengals did, but was it something they did with their, you know, safeties or anything that you just saw out there that was like, okay, that's a lot different from the first half to second? I don't think they did that different, honestly. Um, I think they might switch up some little calls or, you know, you know, switch up a little, a little, some little things um, to certain formations, but um, I think they stick with it, stick with their game plan. I think they were just making better plays than we was, and um, so um, I think this was that, um, but and they came out for a great game. I mean, we can't, you know, do nothing but tip our hats to them and, um, and just put the blame on ourselves. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Nicole, I have two questions for you. Just what was the feeling like going into the locker room at halftime, knowing you guys could have maybe been up 28 to 3 instead it was 20, 21 to 3? Just what was that feeling like in about half a second? I mean, just, you know, um, we get the ball back and let's go out and let's try to score. You know, um, let's let's put some pressure on them and let's go out and just try to execute. So, I mean, we was all good moves, and um, but we knew what we had to do. We knew the game wasn't over. So, um, we were just trying to do things like that, but, you know. We'll see how that went. Um, seemed like you guys got pressure on Joe Burrow at times, but it was hard to actually get him to the ground. Um, can you just talk about how slippery he was and how you thought the pass rush performed today? Um, you know, great quarterback who executed on every uh, senator to get his team to the Super Bowl. Let's go next to Todd Lebo. But Todd. Frank, obviously, you guys set a very high standard here going to the Super Bowls and all that. You fell a little bit short this year. Emotionally, uh, how are you guys doing right now? And how would you characterize what this season is? I mean, you, you can't call it a failure if you make the FC Championship game, but you didn't get where you wanted to go. I mean, you know, adversity. Um, people go through that. You know what I'm saying? I've um, been going through it my whole life. I can only, you know what I mean, picture what a lot of these other guys have been through and, you know, the things they've had to overcome, obstacles and stuff like that. So. You know, long season, man. We started the season off kind of rocky. You know, I'm sure, you know, a lot of people are counting us out at that point. You know, so to be able to get to this point and, you know, um, revamp back up and get our season back on the right track, playing some great football, uh, you know, that was the a great highlight. Um, unfortunately, you know, we wasn't able to finish. You know, the end goal is the end goal, which is the Super Bowl. And, you know, give us some things to go back in, you know, over the summer and over the spring and to look at execute so we can get out there and put ourselves in a better position next year. Let's go next to Harold Coons. Go to Harold. Frank, uh, you know, you go into the halftime locker room about 21-3, but then obviously the second half, things kind of fell apart. What was the kind of the mentality on the sideline there, and what was the mood as, as things started to just slowly and slowly go not the way you wanted it to go? I mean, it's football. You know, you're playing enough football games, you, you see it happen, you know, multiple times. So sometimes, you know, you can be the you know, the, the, the vet from that point, you know, and the helping guys understand, you know, I've seen this before, I've been in this situation, you know, we got to keep our foot, you know, on their necks and just stay at it, stay adamant about, you know, just finishing the game. And, um, you know, unfortunately, it just didn't go our way. You know, it's, things been going our way, you know, all season and, you know, timing and just different little things. And, um, you know, it just didn't go our way. You know, you watch, you know, the offense, they come out there, they start the game off every drive, they scoring, um, they driving down, they just putting us in great position. And, um, you know, at a point, you know, they went in at halftime, 
they made the necessary adjustments that they need to make. And, um, you know, hats off to their coaching staff. You know, that's all coaching. You know, the players, um, you know, they decided that they wanted to go out there and compete this, you know, for the next 30 minutes of, of the game. And that's what they did. You know, it's, it's not a, a shade to them in no type of way. You know, the best team, you know, um, and the best team and the smartest team all around won today. And that was the Cincinnati Bengals. Take two more. We'll go Adam and then Matt. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Frank, um, Super Bowl is all you know since you've been here. So just wondering, now that you guys didn't quite get there this year, how are you going to remember this season? And Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Man, just adverse. It's been a long season. Um, like I was just saying, you know, um, you know, just adverse. And, you know, I'm it's a, I'm going to remember the guys more than the season. You know, it's, it's really the guys in the locker room who I always remember. You know, the long time, you know, you invest so much time not the building and with these guys, you know, you, you you find some great friends in this game as well. And, um, you know, it's the guys, the relationships I built within the, within the, you know, the lines and stuff like that, that I'm never going to um, forget about it. You know, like you said, all I know is the Super Bowl since I've been here. So, you know, exiting on in the AFC championship, I mean, to some standard that's, that's bad, but I mean, it's not as bad as some of the other guys, you know, I got a lot of friends that have been on vacation for a few weeks now, man. So, you know, just, um, you know, it sucks. I got to go join them now, but, you know, um, hats off. Like I said, hats off to Cincy and everything they did up there. But, you know, we just got to be able to compete, man, do better. And you, you, you were asked about Joe Burrow earlier. So what's it like to try to get him on the ground? I mean, tough. He's tough. Um, athletic guy um, can 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 make all the throws and, you know, has, has poise. That's the, that's the one thing you, people don't speak about. You know, um, they talk about the first round. They talk about, you know, how he's won at LSU, how he's continued to win in the NFL, his, you know, how he's gotten better every game, basically. And, you know, you just watch a quarterback like him, and, you know, he goes out and he's so poised. The guy can get sacked last week. He got sacked eight or nine times or something. And um, he goes out and wins the game. You know, um, we even when we played him the first game around, we sacked him about four times, you know, some good hits, and he stands back up, calls the play. Go wins the game, and um, like I said, just had to talk to him, man. Young guy, great quarterback. Um, and I said it before, he's going to win a lot of football games in this league. 